So welcome to the Oneness Connection. Today we have a really special treat and it's related to community and especially the community at Damanhur in Italy. So one of the things I love about Damanhur and the Damanhurians, as they're called, is the expression of greeting, which is conte with you, which is so different than, hi, how are you doing? Which seems to be not very mindful. And so I want to begin this with conte with you and have you hope you will tune in to the energies and the frequencies and the information that's shared. Damanhur has some amazing experience with community that has been in progress for over 50 years. And there also are the amazing temples of humankind. So Damanhur was birthed from the sense that humanity was on a timeline of destruction. And Damanhur created a new timeline, one that brings humanity back to human values, wisdom, and a connection with nature. And I'd like to begin with welcoming Bertuccia, who is the person who is in contact with communications, and Celestina, who has lived in Damanhur for some time and has a child at Damanhur, and Anaconda, who is our longtime resident of Damanhur, who has been there over 30 years. So welcome to all of you. And Bertuccia, mm -hmm. I'll let you do an introduction of the different members of the community, and then we'll talk about the community experience. And I just want to say that one of the reasons that um, this topic of community is so important right now is that so many people are telling me, I want to live in a community. I want to have a community or create a community. And so you being here to share your experience is really fundamental in helping others to make those connections. Welcome, Celestina, Anaconda, and Bertuccia. Bertuccia, over to you. Welcome, boy. As you said, uh, our greeting uh, is expressed in this way, which means I am with you, Conte, I am with you. And it actually expresses the basic uh, building block of our philosophy, which is giving meaning to things, even the smallest things like greeting. As you said, saying hi or saying ciao doesn't seem so mindful because we say it hastily and usually without even thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, our greeting wants to give an expression of that I am truly with you, with all my parts. Yes. So yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about ahead. your history with with Damanhur, and then we'll move to Celestina and Anaconda and ask them as well. Sure. So I met Damanhur in two thousand and six, uh, and it was a pretty synchronic story because I was searching for a place where I would find the big answers to all the life's questions. And not even uh, a few weeks after I posed this important question, I found out Downer through pictures of the temples. I found it on a Croatian portal. I am Croatian. And I said, wow, what a place. I, I want to see that. How come I didn't know this existed? And uh, I wasn't into community living uh, and... I wasn't uh, interested, let's say, in a social aspect of community living, but I was very, very into and passionate about spirituality in general. Uh, in Damanur, I actually learned that, this, that those two things are two sides of the same coin. And for the first 10 years, I helped uh, grow the community in Croatia. So we have a pretty large community there. Uh, when we talk about the Damanur, we don't talk about only the North Italy, which is the place where it all started in the 70s. But today, imagine different communities being from Australia, Japan, uh, all over Europe, uh, and also the US and in the Colorado. Mm. When I was so, there, uh, for the first, mm -hmm. when I was there, I saw. Um... A, a small group of Japanese women who have a community in Daman, a Daman Hill community in Japan, which is really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. And they have uh, actually celebrated their first anniversary mm -hmm. of the, let's say, uh, pub publicly uh, celebrating their first year of community in Japan. So they have also the living aspect uh, 
in in Japan and they are really really amazing very into it very passionate so they recreated different aspects of Damana also in Japan it's oh, beautiful cool so Celestina tell us about your experience since you're a mom <laughs> Well, I am a mom of a four-year-old. She turns four now in September and uh, another um, boy or girl that is coming in the beginning of October. <clears throat> well, when I came to Damaner, uh, I was 21 years old and I was not a mom <laughs> by the time. Uh, I had had a spiritual uh, awakening as many others uh, around 2012 and I had been traveling around the world to try to understand what it was all about because it was quite quite shocking for me not being interested in spiritual aspects before mm -hmm. this awakening and um, at a certain point after a couple of years of traveling and to many different spiritual uh, places in the world and spiritual groups like in the Amazon jungle or in the Himalayas trying to find a kind of way I really connected to also what you said that so many people are looking for community because of the realization that changing the world by ourselves is not very sustainable and so I found Damanhur through actually Google search <laughs> practically uh, and um I came to do uh, for a couple of months to try to 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 feel how this was. And I had no idea how spiritual Damanhur was until I was here. Actually, I was more, I became very much into the community, growing your own vegetables, these kind of things. So I was very surprised to see this huge philosophy and ecosystem that really resonated with me spiritually as well. And that was the thing that really allowed me to say, okay, and I, I stay. And this was now almost 10 years ago. Wow. Okay. You know, one of the things that I've noticed that Damanhur does, which is really, really wise, is it gives people a chance to kind of test drive. Do I want to be a member of Damanhur? What's it really like, you know, kind of wards okay. and all. And then you have like a, I guess, a 10 day program and then a two month or a month long program. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a 10 day program that now I'm actually responsible uh, for. Uh, also giving the uh, given the fact that I arrived in a similar program and then we have another program that is one month and it's beautiful because both these two programs give all the kind of information and energy input of what Damanhur is and allows people to connect with the Damanhurian people and then to see if they if they resonate and want to stay longer so I also think it's a it's a beautiful way to expand the community yeah cool we'll come back to that a little bit later so Anaconda you have the longest story tell us about it because you lived with the founder Falco and you spent much time there so tell us about your experience well, with the we just we all actually uh, have uh, spent time with the founder <laughs> that's true because that right Celestina when you arrived no, I actually sadly arrived just a, a year after his party. A year after. Oh, okay. okay. Shortly it was after, sorry. very bad. <laughs> <laughs> sad. So Tucha, for sure, she was around. Anyway, yes, my uh, my full name is Anaconda Papaya. Uh, we have both animals and animal and plant names. Mm. And um, I arrived. I. Let's say I started studying in Damanhur in 1989, the spiritual healing school then, uh, which lasted three years. And at the end of which I uh, I fell in, I had fallen in love with Damanhur. And so basically I started spending more time in Damanhur than my, the, where I was living then in Milano, where I had a center, where I had a, a yoga studio and I used to teach yoga and um I had, before joining Damaner, I had spent 10 years as a monk and uh, practicing mainly the bhakti yoga. And also I was passionate about hypnosis, um, particular for past life regression, because I was really into understanding, you know, where we come from, what happened to us individually, but also to the history of this planet mm. to understand what was really going on. And um through hypnosis, I really learned a lot. And uh, this whole research led me to spiritual healing, which I learned in Damaner. And then I realized Damaner to be a place where I could really amplify my own personal contribution. And for me, this was the 
essence of my uh, motivation in the sense that I had been already working for many years as a healer, as a yoga teacher, as someone um, already introducing in my own little way people to their spiritual path or helping that to happen. But then it really felt like uh, emptying the ocean with a spoon because it's a never ending, you know, especially I had um, some of my students when they had children, they were lamenting that they had learned all kinds of consciousness aspects. And then they sent their children to school and their, their teachers of their children were people who were completely asleep, unaware. Mm -hmm. And so they felt a little desperate. And when I met Dominer that had its own school, its own uh, news, daily newspaper, it, its own currency, its own farms and uh, health food distribution system, I really felt like, wow, it really takes uh, a community to, to create an alternative to this whole mainstream system that was and uh, in some ways still is attempting to murder this planet and this society you know mm -hmm. by having so much so we know that and the community factor I felt that it alone I could only do that much but if I joined my strength with that of many others who shared the same ideals well then and there my life changed because I could really feel connected and really feel the higher purpose was and I could see results because by living and manifesting this together it was just a complete different game mm. that's the idea of community life yet yeah, does it mean and maybe we'll get there later if you have more questions on this but it doesn't mean it's all easy you know it's living in community it's challenging <laughs> but it's definitely uh, more rewarding than living our own lives and just observing the planet, you know, going south. Yeah. At least we're doing our best together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's amazing. So I wanna, we'll come back to the community and spirituality aspect of it. I'd like for you to talk a bit about the structure, because one of the things that surprised me whenever I went is that it's not, everything isn't all stuck together in the same place. There there was the, the lodging that I stayed in, um, which is an independently run uh, business which is run by Damon Hurriens. And so, you know, the your your sense of um business and the structure of the community is really interesting and in how different people live in different areas that are not necessarily in the center. So um Alicana, maybe we can start with you and then come to, to Bertucci and do a circle again. Yeah. Briefly, Damaner has developed in on a vast area within a valley called Val Cusella, north of Turin. But um, it started in what we call the capital or the first city or the central area. But then it developed and there are about 30 different communities. We speak of Damaner as a community. Indeed, Damaner is a federation of communities. We have about 30, uh, in a sense, independent communities where people from five to 15, uh, sometimes even 20 people live together, meaning they share a uh, housing situation, which sometimes is in the city or in the town, sometimes is more countryside, as, depending on the, on, on the group's vocation. And uh, they, they share the common spaces. We share like the kitchen, which obviously is big usually, <laughs> and then the living spaces inside, outside, but then everyone has their own room. Couples, singles, children, everyone has their own independent space, but all the common space is shared. That's what we call a community. And there's about 30 different ones, and they are also grouped in regions. So this is the basic structure. And this all happens not all patched together in one area, but it's spread out in, I would say, probably something like 15 miles um, um, diameter of a area, mm -hmm. <laughs> 15 to 20 miles, maybe. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is how Damaner developed. And it's very integrated with the local community. Many of the members of the community of Damaner work outside in the local area and community um, as doctors, lawyers, um, all kinds of services and working. And we are 
many people from the area come to Dominer locations for the services we offer. We have some of the best um, alternative medical uh, services in the area, which is being used by many, many people who are non-Dominarians. We have children coming to our school who are not Dominarian. Uh, their parents are not Dominarian members, but they still appreciate the school. Some even moved in our area, moved near Dominar without joining Dominar just to be in our schools. And then we have doctors who are very well known and, and so on and so forth. So on one hand, we are spread out in a large area, and but we are also very integrated. We even have some of the members of our community of Dominar are having political roles in the area, like I, I the see. mayor of Vidraco is a Dominarian. And many in the council of many towns, there are many Dominarians as well. So we have a lot of, um, let's say, ordinary uh, social roles and integration with the local community. Yeah, I think that's amazing. When I was in the cafe there um, at the center, the Welcome Center, I saw one of the political election documents, brochures from the local Dominhurians who are running for offices, which is really cool. I was going to ask you about that, by the way. So thank you for us for answering that. Yeah, it, it, I just want to specify it has not always been this way. In the very beginning, Dominhurians were seen like some hostile. Uh, external because you see the name Valcusella means closed <laughs> valley this is typical for mountain areas people mm -hmm. are very attached to their land and they look at foreigners a little bit with suspicion so it took it took some time for local people to to see us with another eye and first we were appreciated but from abroad you know, from internationally, then closer locally Italians. And now local people, most are very fond of Dominer and they interact with us a lot and vice versa. There's always a few, Always, I mean, it's natural who are like still looking at us like some weird phenomena, but as they would look anything that is not mainstream. Mm, yeah, that's amazing. I, that really is appealing to me, this sort of, it's not either or. Many people with community have a sense of, you know, we have to close off from the rest of the world and protect ourselves from the outside world. And you have this really beautiful um, blending, which which is representative of, of how life is, right? It's representative of the oneness and, and the way things naturally are. Yeah. Bertuccia, would you like to say more, or Celestina, about the structure maybe that uh, Anaconda didn't mention? Yeah, yeah, this structure actually changed in time very much. And it depended also on the phase of the creation of community, because today Damner is very much open to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning, when we were just starting off, uh, except the fact that the environment was a little bit hostile to, to something different, which is normal for human nature. We usually respond with fear, with new things, mm -hmm. for new things. Uh, so at the beginning, Damon was more closed in that sense. So it had uh, its own specific way of living and being. And visiting Damon wasn't so simple. Uh, and then bit by bit, as Damanur grew, as it created its, let's say, building block and its base, then, then it's easier to also open yourself up and create a connection and, and an exchange with, uh, with the environment, both locally and worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would also like to add the fact that this being uh, active on a local level, not only within the community, is also down to one very important, let's say, principle of Dominar, which is that of solidarity. And solidarity is not something that is shared only with the members of your family. Solidarity is a human value. So if we incarnate solidarity, this is something that we need to spread and, and live with everyone. And so in Dominar, one way that really helped this local reputation and to really create good relationships on a local level was to use this sense of solidarity in a practical way. In Dominar, we've had ex many uh, volunteer teams that have helped in Red Cross or firefighters or, and also as Anaconda said, creating many different services that benefits 
the whole valley, not only the Manhurians. And this has allowed to create really good neighbors, so to say, uh, which is very important also in uh, trying to see the, the survival of a community. For people who want to create a community, it's very good to create good relationships with your neighbors because that is the people that in case of anything would happen, you need to have those strong bonds, even with people who are not part of the community itself. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think it's worth mentioning one detail is that the pre Damaner's presence in this valley has attracted hundreds of people, even not necessarily to come live in Damaner, but in the aura of Damaner, the surroundings. As a matter of fact, in time, this valley, it took the name Valdiki, which also is like chi, like energy. And it is somewhat, it has been traditionally... That, there's, I don't want to get into the whole history because it it's, would be very interesting, but maybe too time consuming. But there is a, a historical presence of Celtic civilization in this area. Mm. And there is kind of a renewal of a reawakening of these traditional spiritual cultures that are is emerging. And many people are attracted, even whole communities or groups of people from other spiritual traditions are being attracted to come live nearby Damaner to create like a sacred valley atmosphere. And it's, we were talking about this 25 years ago and Falco was talking about it, Damaner's founder and inspirer. And what's amazing, we're now witnessing it. We haven't really tried anything. And we, I mean, when we tried about 20 years ago, it didn't really happen, it appeared, but now it's actually manifesting. So it's that's really interesting thing about this phenomena. And when you said in the very beginning something about Damaner, yeah, Damaner has this idea that there's uh, we are born from the idea that there's uh, I can't remember the exact words you said, but about the timeline, the mm -hmm. fact that you know yeah. the the destiny of this earth would have been if people weren't wouldn't awake and change direction, we were doomed mm -hmm. to go to so um and you said Damaner has this idea that we have changed created a new line timeline you know you were saying mm -hmm. so i just want to specify that from our point of view it is not just Damaner who did this alone Damaner has played a role but together with all the other groups who have been working in the same direction for decades if not centuries and also every single individual whether they call themselves this or that but all those who are feel the mission of of really changing the atmosphere of the earth and participating to this new timeline well mm -hmm. from our perspective they're all included in this game whether they know about it or not but they're all contributing to creating mm -hmm. a new plane of reality that can mm -hmm. substitute the other one which didn't end that well let's say yeah in our vision of history <laughs> you know, one of the things I want to bring forward is also the connection with art and the power of the temples. There's an image that comes to me. I believe it's in the Temple of the Earth, where there is, I see this mass of gray beings, human beings, all moving forward, kind of, you know, they're all gray, they're all gray. There's and then as they move closer to the temple, as they move closer into this, this aura of Damanhur and this awakening spirituality, they turn into vibrant, colorful, happy, joyous warriors. <laughs> that image to me is just that is is so striking. And it's and it's huge as you're standing on the floor looking up at this mass of people transforming before your eyes. And that's just very symbolic and representative of what you just shared. Yeah, that's it's just so powerful. Um, the temples are something that will be interesting to touch on as well. I had a chance to go in and uh, despite a bit of my claustrophobia, Cochinella helped me to <laughs> overcome the, you know, there are these narrow entrance ways. This is built into the into the mountainside, and it's on these three different levels as you walk into the mountain. And so there's the main, one of the main houses there where I saw this, the huge dining table for like 20 people, which was pretty impressive. Um, and then we went into the temples, and uh, there were just, uh, there were just, 
two, two, two of us with the uh, Cochinala and having an opportunity to sit there in the power and the energy that has built up there over these years was just amazing. It was so um, transformative and so healing and um, there are no words for it really. That energy, it was so palpable. The energy was so palpable for me. Um, how much do you feel that that is um, responsible for things that are evolving in terms of the diamond hearing community? Is that like a center? Can it be connected to a religion? So I'm sure people are asking these questions. I know what my impression is. I'd just like to have you share about what's that all, what's the, what are the temples of humankind all about? Well, the temples of humankind basically are really um, an antenna for the awakening of humanity it's uh, it's a space where all this philosophy of a new way of living on this planet which is not only living on this planet altogether in a harmonious way but also how we as human beings can awaken and illuminate ourselves so each hall is really like a journey within ourselves and also as human civilization the temples are also placed on a on a very powerful location within the earth. There's no, uh, it's not a coincidence that it's placed within the earth because it is connected to the synchronic lines, which uh, are energy lines that are like, let's say, the neurons that brings information and energy on the planet. That we have also, there's a microcosmos within ourselves, and then there's the macrocosmos. So. The idea to to place such an important place with these values of this new myth of, myth, myth of humanity, this new story of how we can actually live on this planet, of how we can reawaken and realize that we are one with this planet on a, a place that can transfer this energy onto the planet. There's This is not a coincidence. This is really why we call it an antenna for the awakening of humanity. Mm. Beautiful. So this is the main function of the of the temples. Yeah, and the art that rep that communicates the joy that communicates the the paths that we move through in the journey of life is it the temple of time? Is that it or the metals? It was the metals, right? Where you've got all the different ages. Um, it really it's really powerful to manifest um, the information about the different ages that we move through because there's society has such an odd um attitude about about this about time and, and how we relate to time um the connections with the different um shall we say deities or energies of the different god sources or forms that are presented in the temple that was in the labyrinth is that right labyrinth. is that what it's called yeah where you see um everybody from jesus to buddha to i don't remember if krishna was there i know there were native americans um it was quite powerful seeing all the different deities there as well so that was that was really amazing